All right, hi everybody. Uh, yeah, it's a very, very early stream. I ended up crashing like the whole night. On Saturday, I stayed in. I wanted to do a game, but uh, then I woke up and uh, yeah, thought I'd do a little uh, tutorial here. Um, again, for many of you, you're gonna know this. Um, so, but uh, Mick F had um, told me in Discord that he pulled the trigger and picked up the basic game plus the. Um, Baseball, the complete collection. Really, really good on mix. So talk about going all in. How about it? Wish I would have had the money to do it, but I had to get everything through the years. And, you know, thanks to some gifts from people as well, which is really nice. Who surprised me with uh, guest accounts and things like that. But, uh, yeah, I would say I, I bought like a 98% of everything. And then um, just some friends around uh, back in the day. Um, buying and gifting me some stuff, which was really nice. Um, but <clears throat> Mick was saying that he wasn't sure, you know, as far as installation and stuff. So I thought I would do this like kind of little beginner's guide to a bunch of things here. So um, we'll get into it in the two different products. He bought the baseball history or the baseball complete collection, but he's holding off on the baseball history collection. Um, and they are two different animals. The Baseball History Collection is not included in Baseball Complete. They are two separate products. And I'll explain the difference. Uh, but first, as far as installation and things like that, let's start with that. So you're going to download the file, okay? And that file is going to have like a little icon that looks like a zip icon. So when you install it, I recommend just with this game, usually... You know, modern games let you just install to any drive. I like to put it, Action PC specifically, um, on the C drive. Okay? So, um, you will come here and you will see, once it's installed, and it's really small by itself. It's just Baseball 2023. And when you open it, this is where you see um, all the stuff here, right? You know, this is like the main game executable. And when you when there are updates, when there are patches, all you'll do is you'll download that file and copy right over this. The only thing that you ever really unzip as far as main game components would be uh, game updates. Okay. Um, really important that you do not you do not unzip seasons. Okay. Of course the manuals right here and everything like that. But this is the main executable. Okay. Now what gets confusing for some people is where where do the data go and no that's not a uh, that's not a grammatic mistake data is a plural word well in that same directory you will see a folder called dk sports data and uh, actually I just realized here Egypt that I am I don't have this on um, on the main screen where I'm streaming so when you install the game, let's get this up here. Come on, you. When you install the game, it's going to be in Program Files x86. Do not put it in Program Files without the x86 because um, this is not a 64-bit application natively. Okay. Then you're going to see a directory. You see here, I have Baseball 2021 and 2023. I happen to have still Action PC 22 installed to my D drive, but um, it turns out to be a bit problematic. So there's Baseball 2023. Let me just show you what everything looks like in there. So again, this guy here, I guess we'll make this a little larger so you can see it. There we go. Um, so there is the game's main application. What I like to do is just pin it to the taskbar because I play it a lot. All right. So when there's a patch from DK Sports, you download that patch, that you will unzip to a full, you know, and then just, you unzip it and just copy the application into this directory, run it. So it's, it's you're actually kind of re-downloading the game or whatever, but it's, it, it's not going to mess up any shortcuts, okay? So this is the one. This stuff you really don't have to worry about. You can leave them zip. It comes with a, a few ballparks, which will automatically um, unzip. Okay, now let's talk about seasons and, and, and all the other cool things. So you're going to go up to your C directory and you're going to go to DK Sports Data, which is what, what you want to look for. 
So wherever you installed the game, but I'm going to assume you're installing to C. Okay. Go to DK Sports Data. All right. Then you're going to see. Once again, you're going to see the baseball manual. Um, some of the things that come with the game, such as uh, the the best teams, worst teams, what have you. Don't mess with the setup. You don't really have to mess with it. You want to go to your baseball subdirectory. And now we see ballparks, player photos, seasons, sounds, team logos, and uniforms. <coughs> so, all pretty self-explanatory. But let's say that you you download a bunch of logos. So I want to try to really impress upon you that the only thing that you do not unzip ever, ever, ever are seasons. Okay? Um, and right now, and if you have everything, um, and I don't have everything installed, but right now with what I have installed, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a fairly decent footprint. It's about maybe, it's, I would say it's the size of uh, of out of the park baseball, but ballparks. Let's say you do, you go and you find a bunch of ballparks, and I am nowhere near where Steve Tate and and uh, others are. I only have like three hundred. What do I have here? I can't even see. I have more ballparks, but I haven't put them in yet. So there's seven hundred and ninety-five ballparks. These have to be unzipped, and then we're gonna. I'm gonna show you how to assign ballparks, do all that kind of stuff. All right. <coughs> so. Ballparks, you do unzip. Um, great places to find ballparks, um, ballpark images. Believe it or not, the Out of the Park forums, um, and I'm in the process of, um, instead of going through the big hassle of um, doing them, pulling them out of MLB The Show, which I will do later and, and Photoshop them or whatever, um, there's a great post in the Out of the Park forums where people put a ton of ballparks and they put the MLB, the show, uh, classic ballparks or modern ballparks, whatever you have, uh, right in there already captured, ready to go. Again, you probably, if you want to get rid of some of the signage and things like that, um, it's pretty easy to do, even with just, uh, even if you don't have a lot of Photoshop knowledge, um, I could do another tutorial on that. Um, Steve uses um, some free software, um, so that works if you have GIMP, which is the freeware. Um, alternative to Photoshop, equally as powerful, but a little bit more difficult to use. I would suggest just getting GIMP um, if you really want to dig deep. But anyhow, so that's ballparks, and we'll get more into ballparks in a little bit. But right now, this is all about the installation process. The next thing, of course, uninstall or is is unzipping player photos, and I've got just in the main directory. Um, what 35,000 some player photos okay again um, as with ballparks you get these in the out of, out of the action PC uh, forums there's also the APC community and good news if you have out of the park though the photos in out of the park will work in action PC baseball all you have to do is copy them from your out of the park directory into this because it uses the same naming convention now you'll see a bunch of subfolders up here, as you guys know. We're doing the, uh, you know, we have the Negro Leagues, we have the Shanks League, you know, the Shanks League, uh, with um, the 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 photos, the card templates, the cards that uh, Steve Tate made. We'll show you how to do. I'll show you how to do this as well. Where to find those photos, so that that way, when I'm playing in the Shanks League, for instance, it's just going to look for these pictures. It's not going to look, right? It's going to assign these pictures first. It's not going to look anywhere in this main photo directory. So Steve, make it a nice touch on that. So you do unzip player photos and you put them in the photo directory. So let's go up one again. Okay, seasons, we'll come back to. Sounds I usually don't mess with, but this is where um, with sounds, we'll let this load in here. Okay, so this is where you're going to find um, MP3 files out there. So maybe things that you want to assign, like walk-up music that you want to do. Uh, maybe some alternate, um, you know, organ music or something that goes on in the ballpark. That's where this stuff goes. Again, this stuff you can find all over the internet. Um, the way that I can do it is through actually a digital audio workstation that searches the entire internet. And I can find sounds probably more quickly than anybody. Um, I really don't play with this. I know Steve's a big fan of this. 
Um, I I don't do anything as far as custom with the sound, which is weird. I'm a musician. You'd think I'd be all over this one, but um, it's really not for me. But in case you do find sounds, put them in the sound directories. Team logos work very, very much the same. Um, and these are easy to find again in, in the aforementioned places, but this is especially APC community action PC forums. Just just Google those. And there you go. You can see I have a really, really healthy uh, selection of logos. There's more I'd like to add in, but this is pretty good. This is pretty good. All right, again, you can unzip these and just put them right there. Uh, uniforms, I don't use these. Um, but uniforms, you can actually download uniforms, and in the uh, in the game itself, where you look at the top, like the you know at the scoreboard, what have you, you can put these in there. It's a nice way to dress up the game. Um, I don't use these, um, but again, it's personal preference. But now we get to seasons. So when you buy seasons, what at least what I do is you can put you can install the seasons kind of in the main game directory. I like to keep everything here. So this is DK Sports Data Baseball Seasons. You'll notice these are zipped. When they become unzipped, don't get confused, then it's going to create folders. However, seasons you do not unzip. Do not unzip the seasons. If you bought the baseball history um, collection, don't unzip it. If you bought the complete collection, don't unzip it. If you bought a single season, if you bought a decade, if you bought a special set, any of those things, because the game inside of it has a way to it it unzips, but then it still maintains the integrity of the original zip file. So the game has to put everything where it goes. So do not unzip seasons. This is the thing that I remember back in 2017 when I first bought Action PC Baseball that tripped me up and I'm like unzipping seasons and I'm like oh, why the hell isn't anything showing up and then you know typical mail not reading directions then I'd look through the um, through the instructions and it was like oh you don't unzip folders alright or you don't unzip seasons so there's a whole bunch of them I'm including everything that I have all these seasons and what have you <coughs> And then again, once they're installed in game, and I'll show you how to do that next, it creates folders for everything that you have installed. And um, I am nowhere near having everything installed, nor do you ever really, really need to. I mean, unless you're, you're going to do something like your own Shanks League, um, where we're using actual seasons from players. Um, truth be told, while I have everything, and you know, others like MV and McF have the, the baseball complete, which is every season. It's not every product, but it is every season in baseball, including, you know, Federal League, uh, you know, Union Association, American Association, uh, Players League, all that stuff, right? Um, National League and American League, of course. Um, those are actual seasons. The Baseball History Collection um, is a completely different animal, but between the two, I mean, just with the Baseball History Collection, you can do so many amazing projects and sometimes that actually works better than working at the season level um, maybe do a separate little video on what the baseball history collection is about because if you bought baseball complete this isn't in there um, but this thing is updated um, every year every two years something like that uh, but now let's get into game because again I don't want to get off too much on talking about what the products do. And I realize that at 8:19 a.m. Eastern, um, especially on a Sunday, most people are sleeping or at church. So um, all right, let's go to the game now. Here you're looking at an all-time great franchise league. This is a subset of the baseball history collection. The baseball history collection is absolutely brilliant. Um, so this is a subset, and these are all the players on these teams for the 30 franchises here are, um, <coughs> or whatever, we have 32, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yep, 5 times 6, so 30 for the 30 franchises. 
these players are actually this is based on a uh, career slice um, of their total career which still gives you accuracy but it doesn't narrow it down to a single season but the best two seasons or three seasons so the longer a player's career the shorter the peak slice to get him at his best uh, but sometimes it gives you uh, some interesting outliers and stuff like that as well because you might have a guy that had one good season and um, we found that out in the uh, McGreevy League what that what happens it's not necessarily a bad thing so if we look at the Detroit Tigers here for instance you know we're seeing you know Hank Greenberg with 37 home runs Cecil Fielder with 31 this is not from one season but averaged out over maybe a couple seasons or three okay oh we see Bill Bill Freehand is out with an injury how about that didn't know that okay <coughs> so pretty simple how do you work with seasons in action PC baseball well the first thing that you're going to want to do of course is install a season all right so what you want to do is go up here um, Action PC Baseball has two sets of menus. These are ones uh, that these are kind of like I, I like to refer to this as a quick menu. These are probably the things you're going to do most. Um, what I would like to see um, is maybe a way to customize these. And I don't know if that's something in the future or not. So if I, in other words, if I hit the play button. Um, then this is going to come up and these are the games to be played and this will be the entire season. It's really nice. Keeps um, keeps the standings down here for you. And of course who's leading and batting at this point. Pitching. Highlights in the game. And there's nothing nothing live or anything like that. You can do a quote unquote 10 minute ticker on this. Alright now. We're going to install a season. It's, um, it's as much work or as little work as you want. You also notice here there's not a uh, there's not a logo yet for uh, the American League West because no games have been played yet in this one, but it will do things like show the uh, the team in first place. You'll get to see their logo over here, really nice. And then for leaders, you're going to get to see the player pictures. Okay, so go up to install and just go to season now. This is kind of important because Steve Tate, who is a long-time guru of this, got caught on this back in December or something like this. So let's say that you've downloaded Steve's superb five-year franchise files. And if you haven't and you have this game, you really, really should get those. All right. So you're going to see these two here. The, the seasons are going to show up. These are going to be the ones that are in the game directory. So don't, don't mess with that. I mean, if you want, unless you want to use those, that's fine. But look in Seasons folder, and here's what's really important, especially if you have homebrews like Steve's huge files. You want to do display all zip files. If you don't select this, all that's going to show up will be Dave Cook products. That's it. Okay. So let's say you're doing a, a you know, a Shanks League, or you know, you're, you're, in other words, you're passing around game files among your your league owners, um, you definitely want to do this whichever way. Okay, so now you see that this is really, really, really like blown up big time. So I'm going to find a season here that I know I don't have installed. Um, so let's just say 2011. All right, click it once, click install, and it's done. Then as soon as you do that, it's going to switch. There's the 2011 season. Seasons are what they are based on the actual season. So anybody that we look for this, their statistics will be for that season. So this is 2011, and we'll of course look at the uh, St. Louis Cardinals. There they are. Okay. Usually you're going to find um, with seasons that you're going to have a bunch of people right that are not active. So um, there's a quick way to activate. I'll show you that. Because you might jump right into a game, and um, you're like, "Oh, wait a minute! You know, why is why is Matt Carpenter not at third? What's what's going on here? Or or you know, Shane Robinson, whatever." So you'll activate these guys um, down here. There's no logo. It's not going to default assign the logos that you have. You have to assign logos. 
ballpark, so what's interesting is it will assign ballparks. So um, if you have the ballpark photo, and we'll talk about how to set up ballparks next, because ballparks really the trickiest thing to do <coughs> in Action PC, I think, is installing ballparks. But once you get the ballpark thing down, you're good to go. So if I wanted to actually play this season, let's say, right, and again, there's no unzipping, and if I go back into the directory, 2011 is still as a zip file. So this has created a folder. I can do whatever I can with this, but it's still not going to mess with the integrity of the 2011 um, season. Now, for things like the Baseball History Collection, it's sometimes a good idea um, to actually copy the entire database. So we are in the database here. If we click on this, there we go. Here is everybody from the, um, from the 2011 season. And right now we're just looking at um, Arizona. But we can see, do we have any free agents here in 2011? Yeah, indeed we do. Yeah, there's a bunch of free agents here. And, you know, this would be my, maybe what you'd want to use for um, maybe some calls. So there's only like 49 of them. Uh, but let's look, at the, just, let's look at the Cardinals first. Um, season file's a lot smaller, obviously, than, um, than the baseball history collection, which is really nice. So there are St. Louis Cardinals. There, there's their 23-man roster. There's Berkman, John Jay, Plasma, whomever. Okay, you can filter all this and have lots of fun. I can just look at their pitchers. There they are. Um, but it's that simple. You can go over here and, and you can just see uh, this game just generates a ton of reports and. With outside the scope of this video, I can actually also create even more search criteria if I want to. It's one of the things that makes this game super powerful. But that is not the purpose of this video. Okay. So um, by default for batters, it's going to show you, and for pitchers, the the old Macmillan, um, you know, kind of traditional baseball stats. You know, except total bases, which glad is not really a stat anymore. It never made any sense to me. But now, if I want to get this ready to play this 2011 season, I've got to do some things. Got to do some things. It's important. Okay? So, maybe the first thing you want to do is you want to go to rules. Okay? Do you want this to be as an as-played schedule? Okay? It will play it um, as far as complete transactions, rosters. Okay? For each team will include the actual players um, for that game. So this would be like for folks like Clinton Parks. If you like to play, if you want a, a season replay, um, this is this is the one you want to pick. So this would do all transactions, okay? But the lineups may not be for that day, okay? This one will do only major transactions, no transactions, and then this is the coolest one that a lot some people. This is the only I've never seen this in any you know, other baseball game. The alternative reality mode. So what this does is it gives you a lot more value to your collection. Because right now, if we look at these, we, we look at these standings over here. Um, you know, we can see that the Milwaukee Brewers, for instance, were 96 and 66. Okay, um, we know. In other words, and, and, and we know, right? Being baseball fans, we know about the 2011 season. We know that the, you know, who who was in the World Series and all that kind of stuff. What this does is it shakes things up, and it also it, it it's 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 a little bit more realistic, but it also can be a bit of a surprise. And that's the fun thing about it. And no two playthroughs of this will ever be the same, ever, ever, ever. So this shakes things up, and, and it's sort of like a, a manager. So when you're going in and you're using the alternate reality mode, you're actually not going to see player ratings. You're not going to have, you know, you'll have maybe a basic idea what that player could do. Um, but it may be that, like, say, Babe Ruth in 1927 doesn't hit 60 home runs. He hits 47 or something. So just like a real manager doesn't know how his players are going to perform, this alternate reality mode does what it says in the tin. And um, 
I found that among the community this maybe isn't as popular because a lot of people in the community like to do season replays and some people again and uh, that's not a knock I think you you know you play the game the way you love it it's just like Dave Gardner had a big two hour thing last night about is it okay to not like a game um just play what you love, right? We all we all kind of agree on that. Even though, and, and there are games I I don't like, but um, if you are a person who um, looks at a newspaper and see who was in the lineup that day, then don't play this one. Play as played. Uh, but this is really, really, really neat. So um, you could really have a lot of fun with this. And this works in all game modes, by the way. All right. So now we're going to go here to general. So this is where you're going to set up your DH rules. So in this, I turned off the designated hitter for the National League because it's real baseball. Left it on for the American League. And for interleague play, um, I also checked it. I allowed interleague play in this. You can turn that off. Um, ballpark effects, I think that you should use them. I think they're important if you're looking. Um, even in, in um, alternate reality mode, I think, you should, I think you should definitely use ballpark effects. Okay. Um, you could use um, generic uh, lefty righty splits for batters below, right? So you can choose however many you want to do this. You can see what a what a really deep simulation this is. Do you want bullpen warm ups? Yes or no? I usually turn them off. Don't care, um, you know. And of course, you have to face a minimum batter. That's just baseball. Okay, estimated pitch count. If you want this. Um, you can do this. You can all editing of estimated pitch count. So if you want to take a guy that maybe only was good for a couple innings and you just wanted to have fun and make this guy pitch like a Joe McGinnity, Iron Man Joe McGinnity, you can do that. Okay. Do you want to turn on the horrific batter pitcher clocks? You can. Okay. And then, you know, all those stupid rules now that you can do. Um, if you want to do the max pickoff attempts allowed, I never, ever select this. Um, I think that's a terrible rule in baseball now. So, back. Um, so, down here, if you want to do rain delays, you can do rain outs. I have, these un I have this unchecked. I actually should check it there. I like rain outs. Rain outs are fun. You can do catch fatigues. I always like to have ejections. Um, I don't do the 10 minute ticker. That basically is what's going on out of town games, what have you. I don't, I don't use it. You can. Uh, allowing players to play, outfielders to play out of position, you can, um, but the player will play with reduced effectiveness, but it will allow you to do that, okay? You can also do the no pitch intentional walk. This is kind of only good, really it makes sense, just if you're, I mean, if you're playing pitch by pitch mode, which you can in this game, um, then I would say select this. Otherwise, this really doesn't have a huge bearing on the game, okay? You can allow replay reviews, crew chief reviews. I have this turned off. Um, I left regular reviews on. Really, really doesn't matter. One, t each team gets one review, and um, you, know, you have booth review ratings as well. I'm um, sacrifice fly scoring rules. I do modern rules instead of rules for batting team area. Okay, and then we go over to rosters. You can set your opening day rosters, your September call ups here. And then how many you can have in the playoffs. Um, use transaction dates if you're doing that. Again, in in uh, in that <coughs> in something like an all-time grades file, you really it, it doesn't matter whether you do this or not. Okay, but um, if you're doing a season replay, you can turn or turn off. Use daily lineups if possible. Um, so you can set one, you know anything to no injuries, to multi-game injuries, you can have post-game injuries, uh, maximum injury length. I like to set as, as no limit, uh, but if you turn off injuries, don't worry about it. If you don't want that, do it. Um, so player durability rating is going to be, um, I would suggest just leaving this as real players rating, okay, as opposed to making everybody like super durable. Um, and allow the computer manager to make roster changes subject to manager preferences. Um, and if you're using transaction dates as a sister, don't do it. So I don't. You can set everything to computer general managers. Um, I don't mess with general managing functions in this too much. 
All right, next, usage rules. And I know this is a lot, but now that we've gone through seasons, I want to talk about how you're working with them once you have your season installed. Because the first mistake I made, um, and again, you can just play an exhibition game, and then none of this, right? I mean, a lot of this doesn't make, it, it, it doesn't matter. But when you want to really set up your season, go through each of these. It's fun. <coughs> So for regular season, you want to use you can go over 100% of real. Um, you can also, uh, you know, just just you you can how how much do you want to go over their real um, their real usage? You can set that again in the playoffs as well. All right, and their batting is based. You can do uh, batting based on at bats or on plate appearances. That's up to you. Uh, pitching is based on innings pitched or batters faced. Again, up to you. Um, I'm not going to recommend one or the other either way. Um, so usage examples, I, I usually don't touch this. Carryover season uh, usage to playoffs, I think you should do that, my opinion. Um, do you want realistic re uh, rest days for pos position players? Apply usage, all these things here, so you can set up usage rules. Um, let's go to miscellaneous tab. So this is kind of neat. For the opening menu, you can select all of these teams on the opening menu if you want to show and, and, and what have you. This is just the opening screen. Um, if I were to reboot this, you'll like on my opening screen, you'll just see an image of a ballpark, and it randomizes it each time. We'll show the play, uh, so play analysis, um, you know, outcome box, bullpen, pinch hitter screens. Um, you'll see, you'll see those in game. Those are in tabs. Uh, all of this is pretty much self-explanatory. For quick play, um, what you there's just again so much you can do here. Um, so. You know, skip pauses and blowout, or stop pauses. Yeah, skip pauses and blowouts. Um, you know, you can pause the game if there's a triple play, an injury, a fight, an ejection, what have you. I think this is all just um, self-explanatory. And then info. This is probably the easiest one. Display wild card standings, and you can display league standings as one division. I wouldn't suggest doing that. Just especially with something like this or whatever. Um, hide real stats. <coughs> hide real stats could be fun if you wanted to do that. Um, if you want to do it, I don't do it. I like it as a nice guide. And again, um, it's 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 just your choice. Uh, but hide real stats. There's no way then you can see what the player actually did. So again, a nice little maybe augmentation you might say if you're using alternate reality mode in Action PC Baseball. Okay. Salaries. I don't mess. I don't mess with. You can use real salaries. I don't even play with it. And up here are just legal logos. Um, so if you but it also right so if you want if you wanted to use legal logos you can. Alright, so we're gonna cancel out of all actually I should have saved that because of rain outs, but that's alright. Alright, now the next thing um, that we want to do here is let's talk about game setup. Well, there's two ways you can play the game: full screen or three-quarter screen. Three-quarter screen is kind of cool because it gives you all the stats, both um, you know batting. And actually, I should go into a game to do this, but um, we won't in a minute. Full screen gives you the full ballpark and everything. You can kind of move things around to kind of where you want them. Three-quarter screen, I think, is more if you if you want to see all of the stats and who's coming up next and everything. So again, personal preference. The lineup stats. Do you want to show, you know, the real stats? Do you want to show replay stats? I just leave it as real stats because when you're doing a replay, that second line under there will show those stats. Okay. This is going to be the size of the play play call box and all that kind of stuff. And you might have to switch these sometimes from game to game. Um, it doesn't globally. In other words, this is a global setting, so you can't set it per team, unfortunately. Another thing that uh, would be nice, but <coughs> unlike out of the park baseball, these parks are not geo-referenced, so I'm not sure how they would even do 
this bit. Okay, so you can, what do you want, game display options, here they are. <coughs> Again, pick and choose what you'd like, I'm not going to suggest anything. Um, as far as, this is all going to be to taste and how you want to do it. Uh, some people like player photos on the field, I don't. I am one of those people that don't do that. So, um, I always select pitch by pitch mode, never. Um, because if you do, if you if you put it as always, um, basically, then you you always you have to keep setting to at bat mode. And what I do is leave this to never. That way, if you get a crucial game situation where you actually want to see it going pitch by pitch, it's like yo bottom of the ninth, bases loaded, two outs, but the uh, right you got a slugger, the you got Jimmy Fox at the plate, or you got Ken Griffey Jr. Then you might want to. Um, you know, have some fun with that. Okay. So I don't, I I don't really. I just leave this at never. Just a suggestion. Um, weather you really don't have to worry about because the weather will adjust itself in the game. So there's that game era. You can select. This is where you can take a season and actually select another season. So. I could take this 2011 season, but put it in the 1921 American League, and that's going to adjust everybody. All right. This I suggest you do is warm before a computer does a pitching change, pinch hitter, pinch runner, um, defensive substitution. There's your screen name. Doesn't really matter. That's for internet and reporting games. So we're going to click OK on that. All right. So now we've done rules. Okay. So then the next thing we're going to do here to actually uh, get this ready is we're going to go to Organize and we're going to go to League Tools. And you saw that we had some players that were inactive. <coughs> all right. So this is all the reset tools, player availability tools. I like to go through these. Okay. So if I want to set statistics to zero, boom, 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 delete injuries, boom, whatever. So I'm just going to right here set all players active, and then um, I'm going to do reset. Okay. Now we looked at, I believe it was St. Louis. Uh, wait, this is not what I wanted to do. Okay. So that's not not they're not available. So everybody's active, but those guys aren't available. So what I want to do is go back into here. Um, ah, my eyes are still blurry. Blah. Isn't that terrible? League tools. So we're going to do um, set all players active. Set all players available. Okay. Execute availability. Okay. Now, if I go back to St. Louis, there you go. Everybody is available. And at this point, you're actually ready to play. You're actually ready to play. Um, but there's other stuff that you can do in these league tools. Uh, but this is basically, um, like so here, if you place like this partial players, this is really nice. So let's say, you know, somebody was traded in the middle of the year, but they played more time with one team. And I'm thinking of Tim Foley in 1979, right? Montreal and then Pittsburgh. So it'll place combined players with team um, that he played with the most. So you can do this if you want, if you don't want any doppelgangers. Um, this is a big one. Let's say you want to take, um, you want to make, you want to take 2011, or maybe you want to take a number of seasons you've created in, in a league, right? Different seasons, and you want to create a big draft pool, release them all. Bam! Right, you release them all, and then you can, and that's when you can execute draft. I usually don't mess with this with these seasons. Player photo names. This is basically um, just the file formatting that it uses. And out of the park baseball action PC, usually all the photo packs you find out there um, are player's first underbar last name. And it's usually first initial underbar last name. I usually just, I don't check these. It will go to this default first. Okay. Do you want to use a player year prefix or suffix? 
this is nice and actually something we probably um, might have done in Shanks. Um, and this is a feature I always liked in APA. Let's say you're bringing in players from different years. Um, with this suffix, you think, oh, wait, what year did I bring him in? And boom, oh, there he is. Oh, Ted Williams, you know, uh, you know 1946, whatever. Okay. If you want their team abbreviation, whatever. Okay. So, but basically, this is ready to go. But you'll notice, again, picking on Pittsburgh, let's see, picking Pittsburgh, it doesn't have a proper Pittsburgh Pirates logo. It does have PNC Park, though. So now we're going to get into logos and ballparks, okay? And I hope that maybe there will be some people who who are thinking about Action PC, but um, I hope this is helpful. I know a lot of people here already have the game, so um, this is for those of you out there that don't. So let's find, let me see, do we have somebody that doesn't have, well, everybody has parks aside, but I'm going to show you how to do it anyhow. All right, so let's work with ballparks first. Okay, so right now, if you just hover over, we see here this is U.S. Cellular. Okay, which of course this has gone through so many changes. Um, I don't even know if the White Sox Park is still there. The game comes with these kind of generic logos right here. Um, it doesn't bother me to play with them, but um, if it's a special project, um, then I will change this. So let's go to that first modify team. All right, so logos pretty much are what they say. Now, if you just click in here and you hold the control key and start typing, right, you'll get, and actually, I just hold, I just click in here and just do C, right? But I can do C, H, whatever, but usually C is just fine, and I want to get on to the Chicago White Sox. So there's CHW, and there's there's a number of different ones, and you can download more. I haven't, but let's say um, you know I want to just give them the 1982. There it is. Just remember assigned logo. Now when I click OK, now it's a White Sox logo. Ballparks are where it gets kind of tricky, and this is going to be now a a little bit slower. So let's say I wanted to change this. Well, you would think that if I'm going to modify team, there's my ballpark. Well, there's U.S. Cellular set to 2011, and I'm ready to rock. Um, but unfortunately, you might it, the game might default to Camden Yards. That's usually the default um, ballpark. Um, so we have to. We're going to pretend I don't have. In fact, let's do. Nah, we'll just leave it like this. I'll be able to explain it better. All right, so you have U.S. Cellular Field. So what's important is just to remember the name of the ballpark from this screen. Okay, so it's U.S. Cellular. But a there will be a lot of times where it's like, okay, I've set U.S. Cellular, uh, but it's still showing as um, the default Camden Yards or whatever you have as default. Well, this is how you fix it. Okay, so now we've assigned a logo. Now we're going to assign, and I'm going to change this ballpark just to so you can see the difference. All right, so under ballparks, there are two things park data and park layouts. We're going to go park data first. So for park data, we have two screens here, two main screens dealing with ballparks themselves. This stuff is um, everything that's editable if you want to do that. There's a make F. Um, you see part of the confusion. The game's yes. Exactly. So, Mick, I also sent you a thing um, in Discord about where it goes. I would suggest letting it go to its default game directory and then letting it create the DK Sports data. Um, I wouldn't put the seasons or anything in the, uh, or all that stuff in the main game directory. It just becomes too cluttered. But anyhow, congratulations. So, guys, Mick F. going the way MV did it and just bought Baseball Complete. Um, unlike you know, Steve and Big Clue and I, who we, we had to, over a number of months and years, get everything for this fantastic game. So, welcome in, Mick. Taking, dumping in, jumping in on the deep dive. Mick's going to be picking up the Baseball History Collection <coughs> as well once it's, um, once it's the update is released. Okay, so the first thing here, this yellow window over here is going to be 
that right that park when I moused over that you saw US cellular this is what assigns it however this does not this isn't going to automatically select this picture so if I go to uh, Bank Street grounds it, notice that let's say I had a Bank Street grounds which I don't think I do if it can't find a photo right it's gonna go see photo arrow default okay it's gonna go to Camden Yards um, buyer lease park um, don't even have it's that's phew, some of these things you're not gonna see uh, Braves Field I see Braves Field did change because I had assigned that but I'm gonna show you how to assign ballparks alright so let's go to US Cellular Field same trick works here click in here type the first letter That's all you have to do and there's US Cellular alright but now maybe I don't want this particular version of US Cellular and now you know just need you to think a little bit outside the box no 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 we don't care about that right now alright so maybe I want to have a different photo for US Cellular but this also works for assigning a ballpark to a team so now click over here these are the photos of the ballparks so all this is doing right now is saying US Cellular Field is going to be represented as this field so anytime US Cellular Field is used this is what's going to happen so again now click over here let's type U so there's US Cellular and unfortunately I only have one but let's say I wanted it to be Veterans Stadium for this for for the Chicago White Sox in fact this would be really nice so I could set this as a day photo uh, maybe it's a night photo I'd want to do a different right you can set different parks for day night and then an alternative if uh, you know a photo comes up that you're ah, maybe I want to use this photo instead but for right now uh, let me show you what happens alright so now veteran stadium God forbid is now the home of St. Louis or of the Chicago White Sox and you'll see All right. so now if I go to Chicago there it is it's still calling it US Cellular because remember on that yellow bit over there on that left hand screen it's just saying okay what you know for US Cellular field and then this of course we know is the vet but it's US Cellular and if I would start a game right now even though the game it, it would say the game is at US Cellular what we have would be the diagram and the photo of veterans okay so let's say you fired up your season and let's say for some reason veterans stadium was set as default and you're like ah oh, where is it where is it where is it okay so again you're just gonna go to ballpark data okay and then for US Cellular which is already selected here I'm just going to go right here and just remember to do boom, 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 and then click save. Of course, if you wanted to make a Comiskey Park, you could, whatever you want. Click save. Now, when I go back to Chicago White Sox, we have U.S. Cellular. Now, the next bit that you're that you want to, of course, get into is ballpark layouts separate separate thing and this is kind of a more of a Zen type thing so let's go to ballparks and let's go to park layouts and um, I'm gonna pick something that's a little easier to look at than one of these um, I think these are the it's one of the Gary Grigsby reproductions drawings paintings whatever first thing it's not hidden or it's hidden you don't realize this and I didn't know this until very recently when you're doing ballpark layouts go ahead and bring this thing out to full you know as much to full screen as you can okay so I've been working on ballparks so I need to get down I don't think I'm down into Baker Bowl some of these in Baker Bowl there we go alright so it's a mess and if you would start a game right now um, you know your batter would be over here oh, what the hell's going on why is this so one quick trick to do first once you get to a ballpark you want to go to reset labels. Here's why. Notice grandstands up here. Cat grandstands for catcher. Right field is up here, and then left field is hidden somewhere. Okay. Hey, there's MV. Just doing a tutorial. MV. This is stuff you already know, but doing it for. Um, congratulate Mick. Mick bought the basic game and baseball complete. 
Are layouts correct? No. So, um, I out of the box only. I think only the um, only the parks to come with the game. Anything that you download. Um, I know that somebody wrote a program and I've tried it that tries to get it close, but the only thing it does is saves you a tiny bit of dragging. But again, unlike out of the park baseball, <coughs> these parks are not geo referenced. So you're basically you're assigning kind of ball paths and positions and what have you. Uh, but out of the park baseball parks um, are actually in the real world. They're they're actually geo referenced. So in, in out of the park baseball, 400 to center field is 400 feet to center field. In this game, it's not. It's it's a whole different kind of thing. But it still comes out to that. All right. So anyhow, the first thing that you should do is click reset label. So again, here we see grandstands for first base here. Catcher, right field, left field's hidden on deck. Come if I reset labels. It's going to ask you, do I want to do it? Watch what happens. Now, it sets automatically, which is really cool, the grandstands for first base, for right field, left field, third base. Now, what I like to do for grandstands, because these are really foul territory, I like to move them cl uh, as close to the edge of the screen as I can. Now, there you go. So that saves you a lot of work right there. you still got a bit of work to do. All right, now, anything in red is a player position. So, um, and anything white are the three bases as far as the infield and the outfield. That minus, so minus left field, left center, center, right center, and right field. These are the low part of the fence, and then the blue is the top part of the fence. Okay. So, what I usually like to do first is, again, is click and drag, put on some of your favorite music, and just let yourself, or just let yourself zen out, whatever, right? And I like to, and, and I'd like to put the the runners right on the bag. You could, of course, p you know, simulate a lead if you want. All right, then, um, you know, after you do that, just drag everybody over. So there, put the pitcher on the bump, grab the catcher, right? I usually put them you know, wherever you want. Now, this isn't very precise, I should warn you. So, uh, I, you know. The catcher's not exactly lined up, but it's no big deal. Right? Let's get our right-handed batter up there on that side of the box. Put the left-handed batter on that side of the box. And and lining these up is a pain, but it, you really don't notice it in game. Move your first baseman in. Maybe you want to just play him up there. Where you put these really doesn't matter. I mean, as far as like if you don't have your first baseman close enough to the bag, it doesn't mean that he's not going to be able to take a throw over. This is just for the chalkboard. All right, but you still want it to look nice. You don't want to have your shortstop playing on top of the smokestack out here um, beyond right field, right? Put your third baseman in there. and you know, Again, I'm, I'm a little bit picky. On deck road, on deck home. What's nice is, of course, way back in baseball, um, the home on deck used to be in the third base side, but uh, that's been uh, it's kind of changed, I guess. Um, so there you go. You can just pop them in there. This thing's already to pl almost ready to play, except for, of course, set your outfielders. And I mean, it's, this might seem terribly tedious, but you know, uh, sometimes I don't even have on music. Just do it, and you're done. Here's where uh, you've got to just use your imagination a little bit. You don't have to be terribly pre precise. Um, I like to do left field. Some people do it right down the line. So, you know, you can do that. Get as close as you want. And then I can see up here. I don't want this up here. This isn't a fence. This is a building. So that is going to be... I can either make left field... As If you do this, that makes this a whole wall. So rather what I want to do is I want these two to be really close. Okay. So there. That's how you set up your... That's how you set it up. I like to leave a little bit of air, if you will, as artists we artists call it. Okay, it doesn't matter that these two are not lined up. It's okay. Left center, same thing. And if it's down a little bit on the field, that's fun. The program is still going to be able to pick it up. Leave a little bit of air. Now out here in center field, uh, because Baker Bowl is such a tiny ballpark, and let's move our center fielder in there just for aesthetics. Okay. Now I know that this is a fence, so 
um, I'm going to set this up here. You don't have to. You can set it right to here and say, oh, well, right over this line is a, set, is, is a home run. You can do that. All right. Again, now it's just, this is just becoming uh, terribly, terribly the same thing. Do I want it to be above the life boy sign? I can. Do I want it to be above this fence? I can. Again, tiny ballpark. And we'll leave it there for that. So you're going to get a lot of, uh, of off-the-wall stuff there, probably. And um, this ballpark is ready to play. It is absolutely ready to go. <laughs> yeah, you had to do it, right? You had to do it. Yep. So, MV, the Trailblazer. MV, the Trailblazer. Yep. Complete in one go. Absolutely. I'm going to buy it at the end of the year, even though I have his stuff. Because this guy is such a... He's such a brilliant, brilliant developer. Oh, I forget. Um, so, I like the grandstands for the catcher pretty much as much behind the catcher as I can. And guess what? Baker Bowl is ready now. That's how you do all parks pretty simple um, there's so much more we can get into this game and I'm doing this as a live stream in case people have some questions I can see what I can answer um, the you know we could talk a little bit about the batter batter pitcher analysis how amazing that is yeah he's going to get the history collection MV as he said um, once, because Dave's updating it, so I guess there's an update coming for that. I I certainly can't wait for it to see what he's going to do. Um, I probably should talk about the um, the 19th century collection because that one's kind of a weird animal on its own, and it threw me off the first time. But if there's a request, I'll, I'll talk about how to deal with the um, baseball complete for the 19th centuries. That one's a little bit different. It's a little bit different. And also, um, how to deal with the, um, there's a, a subset called, like, you know, nationalities, whatever. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions. But, yeah, it's usually in June or July, Mick. So, um, but congrats, man. At the night MV bought it, we were just all a bunch of geeks. Because that's a considerable sum to plunk down on what's basically a bunch of data files. Um, but, you know, I'll tell you what, Mick, as I wrote to you in Discord this morning, um, you must have been excited because I saw your timestamp, and I don't know if you're East Coast, if you are. I was like, wow, one thirty in the morning, and, and Mick pulls the trigger at one thirty in the morning um, and just gets the whole shebang. So um, hopefully, Mick, I've answered some questions so um, that will help you. But just as a quick review, gents, Okay, um, what we're going to do is just remember the game itself is going to go, and I, I suggest, again, installing to C. This game isn't that big, and you should have enough room in your C drive. Anyhow, it's going to go to Program Files x86. Make sure, because if, if you put it in just Program Files, it's going to give you all kinds of headaches, and that's because of Windows. That's not because of the game itself. All right? And then, you know, from here is where you're going to find um, the actual baseball executable. So in this case, this is Baseball 2023. And then when you install a patch, you basically just install the executable over the executable. I, I wouldn't suggest putting seasons or anything in this directory. Leave this as pristine as you can. Then you would get back up here. And it'll go back up two levels. And it's DK Sports Data. And please remember, do not unzip seasons. Everything else you can, you can do not unzip seasons. So that's kind of the uh, TLDR version of all this. That, true. That is true. Um, that a lot of people don't want to. I don't either. I just... I know that when I've installed this to other drives, um, it can be... I know Steve does with no problems. I've had some difficulties with it, so I, I, I just put it on my C drive. Um, it will work on your D drive. Just make sure, or if you install to your D drive, that you make sure that when you... Let's say you go into your D drive, which with most modern 
systems, which I think they need to make even the C drive a terabyte in size, let's face it. Because Windows is such a bloated thing anyhow. Just make sure that that DK Sports data is also on the same drive. Um, if not, that it can get really just super, super frustrating. So Mixon Central, so at 12.30 a.m. Uh, this morning, or last, whatever you want to call it, right, uh, Mick pulled the trigger. So welcome to Action PC Land. And I would say if you have this and out of the park baseball, you're set. You are set. I mean, we all have other games anyhow, but um, I don't know if there's anything else I've you know you you wanted to uh, maybe look at, or if this is enough, we'll go ahead and um, go off and call this a stream at one hour. Don't want to uh, blast for people with too many things to worry about or whatever. But um, so we went through season installation, ballpark assignment ballpark layouts, how to install seasons. Oh, last thing. So if you want to switch seasons, there's two ways to do it. Um, so down here in the lower right-hand corner, here's recent leagues. So let's say that I don't have the latest version of Shanks right now, but let's say I want to switch from 2011 to Shanks. Just click Shanks. And now it loads in Shanks. Again, this is a very old version of Shanks because my team was still in second place at that point. Um, Perhaps, you know, now I want to switch to um, 1972. So again, I can select 1972. It's there. Now, this is good for just recent leagues. This isn't necessarily everything you have installed here. Again, let's go to 1916. There's 1916, which um, I will warn you if you're playing a lot of older baseball, you're going to be doing a lot more work as far as um, assigning ballparks. Again, because of McGreevy. I have a lot of these ballparks already assigned. Um, but now, I might not want this picture of Shy, but, um, so I would change it. We also went over how to make players available, because with all the seasons, some players are not going to be available. Maybe that's because they weren't on the 25-man roster. Could be anything. So we showed how to do that. But the other way to move around seasons is by clicking on Seasons. And this is everything that you have installed. So it's not going to show your zip files. <coughs> Pardon me, but everything that you um, have installed. So let's say I wanted to go to um, baseball seasons. I want to I want to show you the um, there's there's a set on Action PC Baseball called Baseball's Top 160 Teams, um, and it's split into um, you know or top is it top 160? Yeah, top 160 teams. So, and I want to do, let's say, National League. Just double click it, and it will switch it. And there they are. You do what one one mistake people mistake is it, they'll do is they'll do the install. And, and the, if you do an install of a season, it will overwrite what you've done. Now, obviously, I haven't played anything here. Uh, this is one of the the really really nice deals too. Um, again, with baseball history or with baseball complete, I don't know if this comes with it. My understanding is baseball complete is just the seasons. So, but I don't think it's like baseball complete meaning everything we sell because that would be even a crazier bargain. And then, of course, you can go in here and uh, again, we did logo assignment. I'm not going to go over that again. But there's the polo grounds for that version of New York. There's um, and Ebbets, which actually I want to change for the Brooklyn Dodgers, what have you. So there is Aaron. Am I free on Discord? Yeah, I will be in a few minutes. Yep. And you've seen some of the setup in the other videos. Good, 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 good. All right. Yeah. So seasons. Yeah. So right. It's just the seasons, but when you have that, except for anything in Baseball History Collection, you have the seasons, you can just recreate this the way you want, but um, this is kind of nice, you know, Dave did all the work, so there you go. Um, you know, if I want to get to Steve Tate's files, I can of course do that too, if I want, which you really should. I guess we'll give the American League, again, you can select here and here, what I like to do is just double click. 
and there Steve Tate's uh, 90 plus teams for the American League and there's of course the corresponding National League and Steve I mean Dave Cook Dave Cook could have probably paid Steve for these and then sold these these are brilliant files get them they do take some setting up but d more than worth it how to download a legal logo do you mean to assign it or because all logos go in the same place so and then once you once you do that right when you go into rules so right now I don't have a logo for this and let's say I I could probably go in and right now create something super fast yours doesn't stick alright so let's say I want to make this shanks alright and we go to setup miscellaneous is it miscellaneous uh, where is it where is it where is it where is it I just did all this um, I just did this. And now I have to go back. See I, I get I get in a certain like and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I'll show you. I've noticed that yours doesn't stick actually. That's kind of uh interesting. And I don't know why that is. It's not tools. Or is it league? Get that rules. Uh, give me a minute here. Info. There it is. So you go to rules, info. And so if I go down here and I'm looking for shanks. And again, remember that trick, guys. Type first letter. All right. And then. Again, this is, this is selecting the league logo, not logos for teams. And then I'm just going to look for Shanks. There's Shanks, and I believe this is Shank, or yeah, Shanks 4. Assign logo, save, and there it is. And it will stick. So you have to do it from the league logo screen. And it's done. So, just to show you, if I switch from American League franchises to 1972, no logo, right? If I go back to um, the AL five-year franchises, there it is. Now the logo will pop back in. If you're doing that, it should stick. It should definitely stick. So um, that's a lot of action PC. And actually, I want to get rid of this now. I don't want the Shanks League on here. That doesn't make any sense. So go again. It's so it's organized rules, and then you know I don't I don't really want to delete the logo, although I don't think it gets rid of it. So let's just do that. There we go. Save, and then it'll go away. That's all. That's how you change logos. Get rid of logos. Yeah, give it another go. No need to get into the picture analysis bat batting tool since this is about installation. So I don't know if you have any questions about ballparks, ballpark assignments. Ballpark assignments are tricky. Um, in fact, if I can find one that doesn't have assigned, and this is usually Steve didn't do the earlier ballparks, if I recall correctly. Yeah, and, but I think like in Egypt, I ended up doing a lot of these. Yeah, okay. So let's do this again. All right, so we have the Detroit Tigers. These are the 1913 to 1917 Detroit Tigers. But you'll see here it defaulted to Camden Yards. Even though when I mouse over it, it says Navin Field. Why does it know it's Navin Field? Because Steve assigned it to Navin, Na Navin Field. But I want Navin Field to show up. So I'm just going to click OK, and I remember that's Navin Field. I'm going to go to Ballparks. Park data, all right. Click here, type N, and I'm going to look. And do I have a native? I don't even think I have Navin in here, so which means I'm probably going to use Briggs. Let's try. Yep, I don't have Navin Field, so that's okay. I can use Briggs, whatever I want to use, doesn't matter. Probably should use, but let's say Briggs Tiger Stadium. I can go over here. Do I have a native Navin Field? Um, yeah, I do. Look, there's Navin. 
and I can select the one I want. And then I can do this, day, I just do day, night, whatever. If it's dead ball, you're not going to have night games anyhow. Click Save. All right, now if I go back again to Detroit, and this is the wrong one. Oh, no, it, it isn't. Wait a minute, hang on. Uh, maybe it's here. Oh, right, actually, this is something I forgot to do, forgot to tell you is for this never 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 do you see these two here with the asterisks assign players to year and set above park as players of life park do not do not do not do not um, don't don't even touch these pretend they don't exist st. mattress this morning hey big clue there you go so yeah st. mattress of the springs is what my priest called it Now, see, I was having a good day, Big Clue, until that. Anyhow, what you want to do is, because if you, if you assign players to you, it's going to get messed up. So just for this team, you want to assign them to that team. Another nice thing with Action PC Baseball is you can assign teams to different years. So maybe I want to see how these Detroit guys would um, play in 2018. I can do that. But anyhow, um, so we have Naven. And we want to assign the team to a park. Yep. And it's, of course, assigned. That's what Steve did. And then we're going to assign this particular team to a year. I'm just going to leave it go. So we'll click OK. But we got to go back and figure out what the deal is with this, because that still isn't fixed, is it? So let's go to Park Data. All right. And because it's looking for a Naven field, which I don't have, like in Egypt, and I don't know why you'd think, there it is, there's Naven. Now we fix it. Boom, boom, boom. Click Save. And where's Detroit? And there's Naven Field. That's what you do. Uniforms, you can put manager photos in here if you want. If I want to put Ty Cobb in here as a manager, I could. Steve really dresses the game up. I really don't. In fact, when you guys see when I play a game, I do not have the player photos at their positions. I personally don't like the look, even when it's beautiful. It's something very sort of acid flashback about having these sort of baseball cards trotting around the field. So I, I'd rather have them just as the batter pitcher and then show them. But that's, again, preference. PQ River at work, sort of here, early birds. So set up a postseason with Action PC Baseball. Same for baseball for Windows. Well, Action PC is really, really simple, man. And in fact, Aaron, I'm going to talk you through it, and it is the same. It's it's basically the same process, and it's working with a schedule. That's all it is. Oh, thanks, Big Clue. The the uh, the PayPal bribe is on its way for you saying that. All right, so you want to do a postseason. All right, here's the way you do it. Postseasons are easiest, easiest to do in out-of-the-park baseball. So much so that, you know, I'm not even going to show you how to do it. I've done it before, but or at least I'm not going to show you this. All right, so what you want to do is this. You're going to go to rosters, all right, and let me see. Ah, let's not do it that way. I want to. I want to create a new league. So, what I actually want to do. Don't go to rosters yet. Go to organize. Da, 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 is it organized? Da, 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 da. Um, league tools. No, 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 no. There we go. I want to create a blank league. So I'm going to create a new blank league, and let's call this since. Aaron is here, 1990 World Series, okay? So I'm going to create a folder, and now we only have three agents here. Now, right here, it, it, it says, Aaron, and I mean, I know your reader software will pick this up. It says this league um, only cre uh, contains free agents. To create or import teams, select rosters. So for Action PC Baseball, I'm going to select rosters. All right, teams, and I'm going to import. So what was it? Uh, the Reds in Oakland, right? 
So if I have if I have 1990 installed, which I probably don't. No, well that's right. That means I get to uh, show you how to do this. <coughs> but let me change this league name. You want to go up here and change the league name. 1919 or 1990 World Series. So that way I'll be able to find it again and then click exit. So there. So let me install the 1990 season. So again, install season. If you're using a Dave Cook product, you don't have to um, check off display all zip files. Um, I always do anyhow. Look in seasons folder, get out and find the season that you want. So in this case, 1990. Now if you're playing um, Aaron from <coughs> from the game. I'm not sure because I don't do season replays, so I'm not sure if Action PC will actually go into the postseason or not. I think it does. I'm not sure. Baseball for Windows does not. All right. Anyhow, this is the way I would do it if I just wanted to do a one-time setup of the 1990 World Series. Okay. So now I've installed 1990. I'm going to go back to recent leagues. Go to 1990 World Series. Go to rosters, teams, all right. Import teams, all right. And you can you can do up to 120 teams um, in a league in this, which is really cool, really really cool. Um, so let's go to the folder 1990. Where'd you go 1990? There's like a new way to, unfortunately. I may have to. There's a little, little tiny quirk in this game that um, you might have to do. So you're going to exit, and you're going to exit. Sometimes you have to restart the game. Sometimes you've just got to switch to something else. But uh, I'll show you why. All right, and then we'll get back to. 1990 World Series. This is the this is a fiddly bit here. All right, you can import, of course, players, leagues, whatever. But um, let's just do import teams. And I know I installed 1990. It's just I think my eyes are really really bleary right now, and that's the problem. And you have to find that league folder. And I know I installed it, man. Where'd it go? Sometimes the way around this is you have to like reinstall it, which doesn't hurt anything. And it's just because I have so much crap installed on here, I'm pro I've probably gone past it like 300 times. So it's actually good that this is doing this, so I can show you guys. You did finish 2000 replay, and it didn't go directly to postseason. Okay, so it does. Then it does. Um, it does exactly what um, um, baseball for Windows does. It does not go straight to the postseason, and that's fine. All right, so there's 1990. Let's just pick 1990, and then now it sh should see it here. Hopefully I don't have to do anything, although maybe 1990 is not ready to play. So I'm going to try something here. I'm going to fix this as if I've already played it. And let's go to League Tools. It's just this is something I've noticed it will sometimes do. So I'm going to install players active and available. Boom, boom. Okay. Now let's go back and see, because now we've actually done some work on 1990. Come on, you little bugger. <sighs> Dave, 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 why can't you make this a little easier? This is where I prefer out of the park baseball for that. And there's no search function, by the way. <laughs> He's got to, like, look. And once you start loading up your directories, man, it's going to be um, pretty much insane. So. Where are you? This is like 
so simple. I'm just about ready to just pick just a random year because I'm not going to replay the 19. That's what we're going to do. So just for now, you're going to open this and you're going to select the teams that you want. So I just happen to be in the 1929 directory, but it works for anything. Okay, so it's going to be, I know it was the Philadelphia A's, Chicago Cubs. Boop. All right, and then import, import two teams. And then I can drag where I want them to be. I don't really care about it. You can. So, you know, you're not, you, I haven't named the leagues or anything like this, but you can see this has it all the way up to, um, you know, all these divisions, tons of things, whatever. You can, even though this looks like a text file, you can actually drag Philadelphia. So maybe I want to put uh, Philadelphia maybe down in this one. All right. Exit, click exit. There, now I have Philadelphia and Chicago. Okay. Then, what you're going to do from here is it's just this is just like setting up a season. You're just going to create a schedule. You're basically going to create a schedule. So we go to schedule. All right. And then we want the series length to be seven. All right. And then for what October 1st again you can set the date up here that you want um, so visitor and home and then um, let's a actually we don't want we just want this one okay and then we add series October 1st all right so there's Chicago and Philadelphia now I'm going to go to the second and I'm just going to do the same thing first two Right, so add series October 1st. This is the same thing that you do in Baseball for Windows, Aaron, but I'll show you. Yeah, the import teams menu needs a search field, <coughs> uh, Mick F. You're absolutely right. Because if you scroll that thing, it's like the scrolling's fast, and I know I probably saw 1990 there a number of times. Okay, so now we're in the third one. So now this has got a switch. So now it's going to be, I'm going to select Philadelphia for visitor, Chicago for home, add series. All right. And just go to October 4th, same thing. October 5th, same thing. Now for game six and seven, I want to switch this back. So Chicago is going to be visitor, Philly will be home, add series, and then seventh, add the same. And our World Series is set up. And if I do play, there's October 1st, and if I click on 2nd, and in 3rd you see them switch up. That's how you do postseason. That's simple. In action PC baseball. All right, way to go, Big Clue. Says he just ate a whole tin of cotton candy for breakfast. Oh, Big Clue, really? At least I had a, at least I had a protein shake. Dude, come on, really? <laughs> All right, so Aaron, hopefully you followed that as far as um, doing this. And actually, now that I've done this, maybe I'm just going to change this league name. And also, Aaron, on your reader software, anybody looking, right, for those of you who don't need it, it's going to actually show this. And I'm going to... Um, actually rename this to 1929 World Series and maybe play it at some point. <laughs> there we go. Waste not, want not, right? Click exit, and now it's 19, 1929 World Series. Unfortunately, it's still, I have to find it under 1990 World Series because there's no way to rename it. Oh well, it's okay. It's fine. And this is actually, it may or may not be ready to play. Um, if you want to assign the logos, you can. So there's Philadelphia. There's only two teams here. And there's Chicago. Oh, I don't want that Wrigley Field. Not 1929. So let's review again. So I don't want this for Wrigley Field. Um, 1929, they are in Wrigley, but I want a different Wrigley. So what am I going to do here? I'm going to select ballparks. And I know I keep going over this so much, but um, I think it's important to click in here. And then I'm going to look for Wrigley. And if I wanted to, I could just do Westside Parks if I wanted. But let's just do... So there's Wrigley. Go over here, type W. And I'm going to find a different Wrigley field. 
Um, here's one from, what, 1932. That works. And then day, night, alternative, save. And now if I look at Chicago, oh, it's, oh I see why, because that's Wrigley Field 1. That will trip you up as well. So ballparks, data, I want this to be Wrigley Field 1. And then, boom, boom, boom. So just be aware of that. Because he'll do like Wrigley Field 1, Wrigley Field 2, Wrigley Field LA. Bush is a pain in the ass because there's like four of them. Save. Chicago. And this is actually ready to play. We can start game one of the 1929 World Series. Love the postseason stuff. Didn't know this. Yep, there you go. Now, in comparison, in comparison, I'll let Steam fire up here, and I'll show you one of the things that I think is that, that out of the park baseball does better. I'll show you that. Just to compare and contrast. Always best to take one bush at a time. Dude, tell me about it. I've done threesomes and twosomes, and, yeah, menage a trois, whatever. And uh, not all are cracked up to be, if you pardon the pun. It won't do this in Aaron. Once you set up a postseason, if you saw when we did the McGreevy World Series, and that was a little three-game World Series, it ended. It will end at that schedule, um, so you don't have to worry about it, because that, that one didn't go three. <coughs> All right, so let's bring up, we're bringing up Out of the Park Baseball just to show you. Now, you saw what I had to go through to create a World Series. So, I'll show you how to do it in Action PC, super, super simple, or in Out of the Park Baseball. I know, right? The daddy thing, man. What what is all what is that? What is going on, man? Of course if you were a woman, it would be the Electra complex, but anyhow, there we go. I'm gonna have to get M L we're gonna have to get Mel B to straighten you out, mate. That's what's going on with you? But I stayed in last night. I was gonna do some baseball and I thought, all right. You know, because Dave Gardner was doing a really long, and it was a cool chat. I watched some of it. Um, the the thing was, is it okay to not like a game? But I actually got a lot of mileage out of what would seem like a really thin project, or, or thin uh, chat thing. But it was actually really good. Um, I don't know how many hours. It was like three hours. But I'm like, all right, so I want to do some baseball for the lads. It was 9 o'clock last night, 9 p.m. I thought, I'm just going to lie down for an hour or two. Dude, I woke up like 7 o'clock this morning, I was exhausted, so, and you guys don't usually expect me to do baseball on Saturdays anyhow. Alright, how do you do um, a World Series? Watch how fast this is, for those of you that have um, Out of the Park Baseball, Historic Exhibition, okay, this allows you to play a tournament, any team against any team, what have you. Um, so this is, this is one of the things that, um, Working with teams that I think um, out of the park does better, especially in a tournament format. All I have to do is select the World Series. So um, I would go to Baseball's Rebirth, go down here, and say, yeah, man, I want the 1929 World Series. One mouse click, and there we go. Cubs Philly, or Cubs Athletics, um, create exhibition. And I click OK. This thing's ready to go. I can make any roster changes I want to rosters, lineups, team rules at this point. Um, make sure you know this is reset DH, but play ball. It's ready to go. Pat Malone versus Lefty Grove, game one. Yeah, Aaron, I, as I keep trying to explain it, Robbie, who has like you know, works when the Rangers are home, but doesn't when they're not. I, I have a, a grueling, tough job. So, I it finally caught up to me. Yesterday was hell day at work. Hey, JT. Good to see you, man. Good to see you, good to see you, good to see you. Uh, the, the messianic kind, the way he talks about Chicky. So, so, out of the park baseball does do this better. 
Um, the only thing to remember with out of the park baseball is you don't is in tournaments or World Series replays or whatever there, you don't have to save. You just return to the main screen and it automatically saves it. Um, the only other thing that you have to do with this, and then we'll get back to action PC baseball, is since I have 1929, uh, you see here there's an historical exhibition. Just rename it, select it, and uh, boom, 1929 World Series. Be a fun project to actually do these on each game. Click OK, now it's the 1929 World Series. And that's it. Click OK. And this is a historical exhibition file. Do you want to proceed to it? Yes. This used to be a cheap way to make big seasons. And this is ready to go. So this is faster on Out of the Park Baseball. Let's return to the screen and we'll get out of Out of the Park now. Play some Out of the Park later, I think. MV says he loves Chicky. He says someone hand MV a tissue. He's drooling again. That's funny. All right. So anyhow, we have the 1929 World Series set up to play on both uh, to play on Action PC and Out of the Park now. And actually, too, what I can do because this is named. If we go to seasons. And it's like, if I don't want to remember it's 1990 World Series, I can just go in to Windows Explorer and see DK Sports Data Baseball Seasons. And all I have to do is look for 1990 World Series, which of course it isn't now, right? And I can just rename it. Now it's the 1929 World Series, and boom. And if I exit the game <clears throat> and restart the game, it should pick up that new folder name. And of course it didn't. It's in Egypt. Oh yeah, now it's just that. So, either that or I'm finding a weird little bug here that it doesn't do yet. <coughs> or that it hasn't fixed. So let's look at season because I created that as a season. Yep, still a, it's still 1929 World Series. Oh no, there it is. There it is. Save. And there's the 1929 World Series. There it is. Yeah, Norm Cash is doing it up in the Shanks League, huh? Okay, Mick. Good. I hope. Uh, so Aaron Reed uh, says Out of the Park is a Steam game. I thought it was. It's it's both. I usually suggest buying it in Steam. I mean, if you have the money, buy both because Out of the Park Baseball, they they have to pay a cut to Steam, obviously. But the disadvantage to buying from the developers is it is is Steam Workshop integration isn't in the out of the park developments version and you have to manually update the game. Steam keeps it updated and you have workshop. So um, I, I say just get it in Steam. It's better. Better to do it. Alright, I guess that's it then. All these folks in here and I think we've covered all the basics. Covered the basics. For doing a World Series, doing installing seasons, and ballparks, and layouts, and logos, which I could do the logos right here, but what's the point? All right, I guess no other questions except Mick. Don't forget, I said I wasn't going to, but I am going to do it. This is an awesome new tool in Action PC Baseball: the batter versus pitcher matchup analysis. And this is fun. So visitor would be uh, the Cubs, and this works with any roster. So um, here's uh, so Philadelphia. I want to see how Jimmy Fox is gonna bat against um, Charlie Root. And I just select Root. 
and I'm going to see how everybody's going to hit against Charlie Root. It's not situation dependent. This happens in game. Um, but a super nice tool that you can get lost in, and you don't even have to have played a single game, and it will do these analyses. However, in game, these will change as you're playing. So when you you you're, you're going to most you this is good for roster analysis before a season, I think, and setting lineups. Um, but then once you're actually um, you're playing a game and you're like, geez, who should I bring in to pinch hit or whatever? Um, this is an absolutely brilliant tool to use, and it will change depending upon uh, you know what the base situation is out um, or or anything like that. So this is just taking this is just matchups all the way up and down. So if I change this from Charlie Root, so if we look here at Jimmy Fox right now, um, overall he's going to have a, he hits Charlie Root pretty well, 29.5%. Of course, Jimmy Fox hit a lot of people very well, but if we go, uh, for instance, to Pat Malone, former Yankee, let's see. Now Fox loses a little. Now it's from 29.5 to 28.9, and we know baseball game of numbers. So there you go. That's the other thing I wanted to show you. That's it. Yeah. So PQ, why don't you put a link to your podcast? That's partially why you have the uh, the wrench in here is so that you can, you know, put links to things that you do or whatever. Now, if you guys will indulge me, I want to do one more thing that's not action PC related. This is one you can kind of just sort of sit back and have some fun with. We briefly touched on this website, but um, if you want to really have some fun. Um, okay, Mick Epps, it's time for breakfast tacos and review from the beginning of the video. Much appreciated, Beatles. You're welcome, Mick. And we're always here. This community is always here. Most people in here have action PC baseball can answer questions, and Steve Tate is truly the guru of this game. But he just noticed yesterday that the weather in-game is also along the top of the menu in the game screen, and he didn't know that until yesterday, which I, I laughed, but I figured why laugh catching it on the flip side. This is called Back to Baseball. This is insane. This is insane. Thank you, PQ River. There it is. So we look at PQ River. Subscribe, I know I will be, guys. I'm going to show you this, and we'll go ahead and close it down. This is a site called Back to Baseball, and this is like, this is a crazy, uh, brilliant research tool, and it's free. So you can, this gets down to crazy level of details. You can actually rewatch games. Not in the sense of rewatching them as you would in classic baseball on the radio, or, you know, or uh, you know, listening to a game or whatever. Although it does have the Microsoft narrator, um, but maybe I want to look at. Uh, let's start with, you know, the search function. I could do a search between two players. What type of game was it? Regular season playoffs, World Series, All Star games from year to year. Um, it gets super super deep. Players. I can look for players. Um, I don't know if Chick Stahl is going to be here. Let's just look at Lou Gehrig. Okay, I can pick. What did Ge What was Gehrig doing in 1936? This is really his big breakout year. So I can go to 1936. Check this out. Look at this. You can see everything that Gehrig did. And there's pages and pages of every game. So, um, you know, and I can, you know, do I, you know, to hit a home run, to whatever. I can do that on other pages. Uh, but here, like on 4 October 1936, he um, hit a double um, off Red Faber, or no, off, um, I'm sorry, off Frank Gabler. And this is in the eighth inning with no outs. And I can actually go to that play and look at it. There it is. Frank Gabler up pitching. Gary hits the line drive in the left field. Out of the reach of Ott, Garrick reaches second with a double. And it will continue the game from this play. Which is really, really neat. It's really, really cool. If I wanted to advance it. 
and in fact there there's Bill Dickey so Dick Bartell up with it and it's cr this is an insane you can you can do a, an audio play by play so Aaron you want to know what his last at bat was like all right let's go back and look at it so let's do that you don't even ha you don't have to wonder anymore you don't have to wonder anymore now I just picked 1936 so I have to actually go back to players and I need to pick Lou Gehrig and I'm gonna go to 19 this is kinda sad though isn't it anyhow 1939 and I'm going to go to Babe Ruth or, or to Lou Gehrig's final at bat. And um, here it is. And it was a line drive, and Ted Williams caught it. That's it. So go to teams. So I'll go to the Pittsburgh Pirates, for instance. Pittsburgh Pirates. Hey, Christopher Slovak. Yeah, they have links to these in the baseball reference site box scores. These are brilliant. One week away from the Berg! So I could pick a year for the box. So let's say, you know, 1992. And um, here we are. This is every single game that the Bucks played, including this awful thing here. We can go to the play-by-play -play of this game of the NLCS. It's 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 all here, and you can do listen to a play-by-play -play if you can stand the Microsoft narrator um, or you can just watch it so obviously for Aaron for Joe Myrtle I believe is his name so I guess if we're a pirate fan we have to sort of relive this right we go to play by play we can go to just details if you want so there's everybody's lineup so for folks like Clinton Parks um, you know, you can do this through Baseball Reference or Stathead. You can also do it here. Um, there's the complete game log right there. You can actually view each play in the game log. So if we go down right here, this is the one that sucks. This is it. And we're going to do it. I'm sorry, Buckos fans. You know, I'm a Bucko fan, too. We are going to do... Here we go. Cabrera. Francisco Cabrera pinch hits for Jeff Reardon. Cabrera hits a line drive in the left field for base hit. David Justice scores. Sid Bream scores. Barry Hill moves to second. 200 runs. That did it. Buckos almost made it to the World Series. But there it is. I could go through all of baseball history. Do I want to go back? I could go back on this thing. And there. It, it, it knows that it's over. Braves win that one 3-2. to two. What a heartbreaker. Uh, the Bucks literally almost there, winner loser, what have you. So it's kind of a nice way you could listen to it. If you want to listen to it, I know it's gonna like suck, but here we go. Um, Welcome to Atlanta Fulton County you Stadium can listen to in this Atlanta whole game if you for want. the game between the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Atlanta Braves. Here are the starting lineups for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Batting in the lead-off spot. The right fielder, Alex Cole. Batting second. So, um, but, but we haven't even gotten to the really fun stuff yet. Let's go back to home. Um, simulations is crazy, crazy, crazy. So, MV, you might like this one. All right, so what this does is it will play out 5,000 games. 5,000 games. Any two teams in history. Uh, JT Dutch says, I think everyone except Braves and maybe Phillies fans wanted the Pirates to win that series. Actually, um, even even Phillies fans, I have a lot of friends that are Phillies fans, and I am unfortunately living in um, sort of like it's more Phillies here 
but it's it, there's still some pirate fans. But yeah, and we were so close. All right, so let's pick a home team. So first, let's pick a year. Um, why don't we do? Because I'm sick of the Braves. Why don't we do the 2016 Chicago Cubs? And let's put them up against somebody. How about um, the 2000? Whatever. Let's just pick a year. How about the 1968 Detroit Tigers? So let's do the Detroit Tigers. I love this site. This thing is fun. All right. And then we're going to view lineups. All right. And there they are for the lineups. Now we're going to do a simulation, and this is going to simulate games. Here we go. Generating 5,000 simulations and we see that when we match up um, and this might be fun for projects right? So we see here that the Detroit Tigers um, right? So, so the Cubs won 56% of the games the Tigers won 43% and then you can actually go here, look at these, click on any one. So here's one that the Tigers won and shows the lineup and what have you. And then from here you can click on any player, look at any play in his history. So really, really, really fun stuff. So you can modify the simulation if you want. So maybe you want to put in a different player, you want to change the lineup you can do this and redo the simulation. Yeah, the matchup stuff is brilliant. A fun one would be to pit the 2016 Cubs against the 1906 Cubs. Let's do it. 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 All right. So we'll make the uh, 2016 Cubs the home team and the 1906 Cubs the away team. I know MV would prefer the 1907 Cubs. Oh, bad news, man. So for simulations, it only goes back to 1921, I'm sorry to say. So, ugh, let's try something else. Anybody have, so this only goes back, for games, it'll go back to, it'll go back further, but for simulations, 1921. Yeah, only goes back to 1921 thus far. Here's one. What about the 1951 Dodgers and um, Giants? Let's do that one. Because, of course, that came down to that fateful... Um, that was the Bobby Thompson game, right? Shot heard around the world. The Giants win the pennant. The Giants win the pennant. Right? So there we go. And I'll give you a New York Giants. Right? It gives you all the teams, but... So we went the New York Giants, and then, again, the 1951, um, let's do the Dodgers. For JT, Dodgers, he's a Dodgers fan. Hopefully, though, as, as more game information comes in, they're going to make this a bit more uh, robust. There they are, the Brooklyn Dodgers. Let's just view the lineups. There we are. Now, did Thompson lead off in, 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 in this game? I don't know. I have no idea. We can change this. If I click, I can change, put in a different player. But let's just do, so let's do it's 5,000 simulations. The Giants won that. So, and this is showing that after 5,000 simulations, this particular lineup of the Giants beat this particular um, lineup of the Dodgers. So, the um, New York Giants would win 61% of the games, and the Brooklyn Dodgers would win 36% of the games. So, there you go. I mean, this is really, really fun. Yeah, it is fun. I mean, you could just sit here and like, oh, I want to try this project. See, if you think further, too, it's like, okay, I want to do some all-time greats teams. So maybe you would select what would be, you know, maybe mix it up. Four great teams, four middle-of-the-pack teams that made the series, whatever. Play them off and start making your, maybe you could make selections this way. It's like, okay, let's try this, or what if, you know? 
um, who's the best second to place team available. There's so much you can do with this tool. Um, you can go to games and check this out. So you can pick, let's say I want to do, and for games it goes back to 1903, it really does. But I know PQ River did 1911. Let's see what it does with 1911. So if we go to Team 1, 1911, um, and let's do Boston Braves versus Team 2. Um, I guess, well, they weren't actually called the Dodgers, but there we go. Um, and uh, I guess it's not giving us back this far here. Let me see. Nope, we we're going to have to go forward. There we go. Now we have all these games. So this is the 1927 Boston Braves, Brooklyn Dodgers, and how they played each other. So you can just go to that specific game. So for instance, let's go to 12 April of 1927. Right? And we can look at who. We see that the Dodgers beat the Braves here 6-2, um, to two, but what were the other games? Bucks beat the Reds that day, two to one. Giants clobbered the Phillies, sixteen to seven. And you can look at any of these games. Um, so deep research here, in a more graphical format. Again, so maybe I want to see how did the Pittsburgh Pirates play the Brooklyn Dodgers all season? Well, that's easy. Boom, there we go. Pick any date, and look at that date. And there's all the other scores of baseball. And then we can see here that the Pirates took um, in 1927. Um, again, they were a very strong Pirate team that made the mistake of watching the Yankees take batting practice. Uh, but I can go to any of these games. Boom. Go to it. There it is. Lineups. Summary of the game. And then you can go through all of this and then look at every single play of the game and actually play the game from there. So, super deep research here. Um, you can do the entire game by audio, play by play, as I said. And then here's the box score down here. And then here's the more complete baseball reference box score. Goes right to it. And you get it all. You get it all. Win probability chart going all the way around. Situation, what is going on? Guys, seriously, are we, we are living in the platinum age of baseball research. There's no excuse anymore. Anything that you want to find is out there. Yeah, you could run the Mazeroski Clemente 1960 bucks against the family 1970 Pirates. Yep, the work of 100,000 OCT baseball fans in seconds. In seconds. So this is called back, let's get rid of baseball reference. And by the way, the other thing is um, you really, really, really should have StatHead. Subscribe to it. It's 8 bucks a month. StatHead gets, gets you deeper stuffs. Anyhow, and you want proper logos? If you don't have enough logos for Action PC Baseball, look at this, man. Boom, boom. Use a program like Screenshot, capture them, bring them into the game. This has all the logos, too, so... Um, I mean, this is great. Great stuff. All right, let's try that. We'll do one more. Let's do one more simulation. Got to leave some some uh, some fun for you guys to do. Hey, Legend Sports Universe. There he is. How you doing, Legends? Hopefully you're doing well. So it would be good to see them against the other postseason teams of that year. You can do it. You you definitely can do it, MV. You can literally just set up any two teams and run this this thing that does 5,000 simulations. Yeah, also a discount on thank you, JT Dutch, for telling everybody this. Stat head for out-of-the-park baseball. Yeah, really, really nice. Being even full price to 8 bucks. what stat head can do, just ask Steve Tate. These five-year files might not have been possible without StatHead, so good stuff. So getting the newspaper organized for the day, says uh, Legend Sports Universe. All right, so there's 1960 bucks 
versus the 1979 bucks. So let's do it. Let's do 1960. Pittsburgh Pirates. And the 1979. The only reason I don't want, yeah, I wouldn't want to do 1971 is you could have a little doppelganger on there, but you still could. But let's do the 1979 buckaroons. And let's see how they measure up against each other. Okay, view lineups. Again, there's Tavares, Moreno, Parker, Starger, Robinson against Hoke, Grote, Skinner, Stewart, uh, Clemente, et al. Here we go. 5,000 simulations. Good sample size. And how about it? It looks like the 1960 Pirates um, marginally stronger. So they win 54% uh, percent of the time, and the 1979 Buckos win 45% percent of the time. And then you can see that graphically just by moving these here. Like that. Really weird. Again, you can pick any one of these simulations, and um, it'll do it. So this is showing the first 25 of 5,000 simulations. So, I mean, if you really, really wanted to go deep with this thing, you could. I mean, I don't know why you would want to actually look at all the simulations, but uh, that would be super OCD. All right. PQ River has take off. Real work beckons. Catch you all. Absolutely. This is, this is a great barn store. It, it, it's, it's just so great for many, many things. I love this thing. Now, someday when um, Windows actually has a, a nice narrator, just think about it, man. You could like just listen to any game in baseball history that you wanted to. Just while you're doing other stuff, or maybe while you're doing ballpark layouts in Action PC, pop on something like this and have fun. But frankly, the Microsoft narrator just drives me up bloody wall. Stats. You can look at um, you can look at stats here for like I don't know. Again, it, it's crazy what you can do here. So we can look at home runs and let's look at home runs in um, what? A good hitter's year 1930. Right? And go. And there they are. And we can go to Babe Ruth. We can just, yeah, it's insane. So Babe Ruth hitting number home run 49, for instance, or, or had 49 home runs that year in, what, 1930. We can go there. And there's all of Babe Ruth's home runs. There they are um, for 1930. They're there. What was the situation? Right. Let's see. Did Babe Ruth have any grand slams there that year? It doesn't look like it. Nope. 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 Oh yeah, there. He had a grand salami. There it is. Let's go to the play. This is 27 September 1930. Yankees against the A's, and this is off George Earnshaw. Long drive. It's going grand slam, and that scores Sherrod, Sammy Bird, and Jimmy Reese. And there's Babe Ruth touching them all against um, the, this A's team, which, of course, they couldn't catch in 1930. I'm sure most of you have probably messed with this site, um, but, uh, you know, I thought you might like to see it. Yeah, I guess that's it. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, for you, especially for you, Aaron. I mean, having Ernie Harwell call games. But my point about this is I mean with with advances now in AI and stuff like that you're going to get really really good. In fact, what I could do, I'm not going to. I could actually take each of these and put these into a program and select the gender, age, whatever, and I could actually have 
a narrator call um, at least this, you know, these things. So we're getting there. We're getting there. I think you're going to see the end of, uh, you know, you're going to see some amazing things come out from Microsoft AI is the hot thing. And at that point, it's just like, okay, I feel like listening to that 1951 Dodgers Braves game, and you can won't be exactly as it was. Of course, you can find recordings of it out there, too. But, um, I don't know. I think the most fun thing here is probably being able to look at a specific play that somebody had. Um, you know, for a Yankees and Red Sox fan, Buck, Bucky F. Dent, 1978. Go back and relive your pain if you're a Red Sox fan or your pride if you're a Yankees fan, right? So there we go, guys. Um, I don't remember who... I don't know if this was a big clue discovery. So I know his was lineup analysis, which um, we played with one time on here, which is really fun. But um, Talk about setting up scenarios. What if scenarios? This will do it. Rather than firing up your copy of, uh, you know, action... PC baseball or whatever, running a, a simulation 5,000 times, and you just want to see how two teams did one against one another. Or in this case, as we saw, a season, this would just do it, right? As far as the simulations, and as far as just detailed season replays. How did this team do against this team? You can do it. I, I have no idea, Mick. Um... If Steve Tate would be the guy to report it, because I mean, to get the quickest results because he's a beta tester. So hopefully, Steve will have done it, or will do it, or we'll ask him to do it. That's a weird, weird anomaly, isn't it? They found in uh, Jack Feaster 1907. They switched his handedness from 1906 to 1908, and apparently, World's Worst Gamer has the same thing, and MD has the same thing. So it's a bug. Aaron says last night he did a baseball for windows game between the 82 Brewers and the 92 Blue Jays. It wasn't even a game. The Blue Jays slaughtered the wall bangers in one game. But what if we did one right now? What if we did it right now, Aaron? Let's just see. In that game, which is fun. But let's check. Let's, let's do it. And I thought it was 83. That must be me. Okay. So, but anyhow, let's do 1982 and then we'll end this. I mean, I could just sit here and talk baseball all day, but, you know, we know we can quickly get tired of that. All right, so Milwaukee Brewers, and then what year? Um, 92 Blue Jays. All right. Joe Carter, what a, an amazing thing he did, huh? Of course, can't forget 93 either. All right, Blue Jays. Blue Jays, Blue Jays. Let's see how it works out. Let's see who does a better arse kick in here, Aaron. Do lineups, and let's do the simulation. And here we go. So the Toronto Blue Jays won 60% of these 5,000 simulated games, and the Milwaukee Brewers uh, won 39%. There you go. All right. JT Dutch here giving us some something fun to do. Um, a really cool game to replay on Back to Baseball was 27 June 1977. Rod Guidry actually lost a no-hitter in a Grand Slam home run, giving up against the first-year Toronto Blue Jays. Fun stuff. So, Christopher, when does, um, when, when are you resuming, or have you resumed? I know you were taking some time off. When are you resuming the uh, Creators Cup? finishing that out. Just curious. Legends, I know that you're doing um, I know you said you're going to be taking a break to finish to, to do some stuff, but I was just wondering when that baseball break was coming. And remember guys, Legends and Christopher um, just like about every other content creator on here except yours truly does other sports as well. So, If you get bored with all this baseball from Beatles Eternally you got these awesome guys who do baseball and everything else as well. I mean,
mean, I think it's really cool. Um, it is really, really, really cool. What you can do in this game, or what you can do in this thing, and when you start combining this with, you know, baseball reference and seam heads and baseball almanac and retro sheet and saber, whew, it's absolutely insane. So hopefully you guys like this, and hopefully. Um, you know, this will give you some fun with Action PC if you're not familiar with it. And then a nice little bonus to finish off with Back to Baseball. And that does it. So maybe see you guys a little later today or something. You know, plan to do some baseball today. Don't know what. I might be back in 10 minutes with one. Um, I don't know what Legends or Christopher are doing right now for Christopher's um, evening. Evening, evening, evening for Chris. And for Legends, it's still daytime. So uh, Christopher is actually far ahead of us. He's in the future. Um, I hope one of my favorite sites used to be the Baseball Gauge, and that got taken down. But it's slowly being moved into um, a lot of it's been moved into Baseball Reference. Thank God. But want some brainstorming? You want to have some fun? instead of just doing season replays and I apologize to guys that love to do them but bleh um, go to baseball reference let's do one more I know I say I'm gonna leave but jeez I gotta really I gotta cure this baseball addiction I have alright so um, go down to frivolities where the hell is it frivolities is fun because you can do some really, really, really fun stuff with frivolities. Frivolities is basically where a lot of baseball gauge is kind of going to. Um, let's go here. And we can create some really neat teams here. So while you had to play um, or, or, or on, on an action PC baseball, there's a great set it's called the State League, and it's again, it's not in Baseball Complete. It's a different, it's a sub, it's its own product, or it's a subset of the Baseball History Collection. Um, find all players by place of birth. So let's say you wanted to make your own version of this. Um, you go to Kansas, and here's every player in baseball born in the state of Kansas, and. Fun stuff here. You can do this. Uh, maybe you maybe you don't like action PC baseball. Maybe you have digital diamond baseball, or you have Dombrov, or maybe you're a really rich person and you have every season for PC replay, but you want to mix things up. This is a nice way to do it. A real nice way to do things. Um, there's more. I would like to see what. Um, what this used to do, or what Baseball Gauge would do, is I could pick that I wanted to create an all-star team, right, complete 25-man rosters for 1920, right, or anything before the 1933 all-star game. You could do that, and I'm really hoping that that is going to make it um, into here. Maybe you want to play, set up a league for, I don't know. I mean, there's so much to do here. And, and so the idea of this is to use these resources in your games to kind of break out of the, uh, you know, maybe break out of that kind of thing. Maybe you want to do a, um, I don't know why you would want to, but how about a cup of coffee players and let the game extrapolate them out? Do it. Have some fun with all the things that you have here. Um, handedness. There's a handedness report in here, and you can really, really, really break this down, what have you. So, there you go. JT, so you were a big fan of Baseball Gauge, I know. Um, he just gave up on the project, which is really a drag. Loved that one. And I actually think this...
is now available. Yeah, fond farewell to the baseball gauge. Some of it's going to seam heads, too, as well. So he was hired by Baseball Reference. A lot of his work with Baseball Gauge will eventually feature there, or already has been. Um, this was a great site. I wish he would have kept it up there. Um, I've even looked in the um, Wayback Machine, and um, you can't really find it. So um, I wish now I would have done, created some of the projects that I wanted to do in Baseball Gauge, but. Um, I just said, no, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. So. <coughs> Baseball reference bottom out, and unfortunately, they're still not, they're still way behind. So hopefully they will get that. Hopefully they'll get it. All right, my thank yous to Big Clue, to JT Dutch, Aaron Reed, Legend Sports Universe, Mick F., Christopher Slovic, PQ River, um, MV, of course, he and Chicky Stahl. Um, MV, if you're still here, I'm not going to be doing any Howie Shanks games today, like, at all. So it's going to be all non-Howie Shanks stuff, Ken Castro, League, all that stuff, so. And if you're still available, I can um, meet up. Yeah, Gage had some sort of search features not seen elsewhere. Yeah, it did. And that's how I was able to set up. Like, I wanted to create an all-star team from 1901 to 1911. I could do it on Baseball Gage. And Mick says it's time to play install and play. Time to install and play action. Go for it, my friend. All right. See you down the road, JT. And it's always a pleasure to have you in here. All right, guys. Um, MV, I'm going to fire up Discord, and if you ping me, we'll talk, dude. All right, guys. Take care, and see you a little later in Around the Batting Cage.